Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So today, super quick video on the pub sub event system that you find in the Dawn theme. Um, people ask me about this every now and then, and more and more themes are shipping their own version of an event system. So I think it's important to understand how this works. If you want to learn Shopify development fast, links in the description, but for now, let's take a look. Okay, so then let me show you what we're talking about to begin with. If you're working on the Dawn theme, in multiple places, you will see lines of code similar to this one right here, where you either publish a pub sub event. Yeah, so for, for instance, here we're in the variant select component, and this seems to publish an option value selection change event. Uh, we will take a closer look at this in one second. And then also on the flip side, instead of publishing events, we also find places where we subscribe to events. For example, this is the cart.js file. And here it seems we subscribe to these PubSub events whenever a card update happens. And this is exactly what we're gonna have a look at, like how this works in detail, because it's actually important that you know how to use this. Okay, then in order to explain this better, let's have a look at some events that you might already be familiar with. So here I'm on the front end, I have this simple image collage element here. And let's say we want to react to click events on this image element here, right? That's pretty straightforward. I, I already pulled up the Chrome developer tools here by inspecting the page. And this is the image tag we're talking about. And I'll go ahead and store this as a global variable. So you can just right click store as global variable. This is the same as doing document query selector, so to speak. Yeah, I'm just saving this element, this image tag here in a variable. And then I can go over to the JavaScript console. And now I can access this image tag under the namespace temp1, like temporary variable one. And now I want to go ahead and add an event listener. And the way this works is that we first have to define what type of event we want to subscribe to. In this case, let's say click event. And then as a second argument, we need to provide what happens when this event occurs. So basically the function or the callback function that gets invoked when this event fires. So in this case, let's just define a simple function here and just say console.log I was clicked. Okay, so we want to subscribe to click events and this is what happens, the callback function, when this event gets fired. Yeah, and this should already work. So if we now click the image, it says I was clicked. And if we click it multiple times, obviously this, get, this gets fired multiple times. Okay, so far this is pretty straightforward. Most of you have probably been using click events before, I have to imagine. But also mention worthy, when events fire, they usually also contain a little bit of information about the event, some event data. So instead of just saying console log I was clicked, we could also use the event data and then maybe just log the event data right here and execute that. So now our image element should have two event listeners, one that just says I was clicked and then one that logs all the event data. Let's try that. This is the first subscriber I was clicked and this is the second one that just logs all the event data. And this data object contains a bunch of information, relevant information, like where the click occurred, X and Y coordinates, uh, the element that was clicked, this image right here, the timestamp, the type of event, and so on and so forth. And the main takeaway so far is that whenever you subscribe to events, you have some sort of subscribe method, let it be called add event listener, let it be called subscribe, let it be called whatever. And then you have to provide the event name. You want to subscribe to a click event, for example, and the callback, like what do you want to do when this event gets invoked or triggered? In our case, it was just a simple console log statement, but it could have also been a more complex function. On the other side, there's most likely also going to be a publish function, a function that triggers the event or sends it out into the world. And again, we yeah first need to know the event name. Hey, we want to trigger a click event. And then you might also have some data about this event, like all the click event data, for example, that you want to send alongside. Yeah, so this is really what most event systems come down to, a subscribe method, which event do you want to subscribe to, and what do you want to do if that event occurs, and then also a publish method, which event do you want to publish, and what's the data that's important or relevant. And now if we take a look back at the Dawn theme, you will see that this follows the exact same structure. So let's start in the card.js file. Here we have subscribe. We want to subscribe to this event right here. This is just the event name, card update. And if that event occurs, we want to call the following logic. So this is our callback function. For example, if the event source is card items, we want to do nothing. And otherwise we want to call this function here on card update. Yeah, so this entire thing here is the logic or our callback function that we want to run when this event occurs. 
Then also taking a look into the global.js file where we had the variant select element. So whenever an option changes, they also want to publish an event about this option change. And here we can see the exact implementation. So publish, pub sub event option value selection change. So this is the event name. Yeah, we had click events. Here we have option value selection change. And then this is the data that gets published alongside this event. So for example, here we have the event, the target, and the new option value. Yeah, so as you see, it's not even crazy complicated. It follows the exact same structure. Either we publish an event, then we have to provide the event name and the event data, or we subscribe to an event right here. Then we have to provide the event name and the callback function, what we want to do if this event occurs. And what a lot of people found confusing is this like pub sub events keyword or variable because they thought it was something JavaScript specific. But whenever you have a variable that's written in full caps, like full capital letters, it's usually a constant. That's just a naming convention. And let me also show you this right here. So if you bring up the file constants.js, then we see this exact variable defined right here, pub sub events, and it just holds the names for all of these different events. Yeah, so I could literally go in here, grab the text, card update, and replace this variable and rather use the hard-coded text instead and it would work the exact same way. Yeah, so this variable that we had before is literally just a placeholder or a global variable, which does make sense because let's say we use this in multiple places, like in 10 different places, and in the future I need to change the event name, then I have to do it in 10 places. But if I use this global variable, then I just have to change it in one place. And then I'm less likely to produce errors or forget one place. So it, it's always good to have these constant variables if you have any hard-coded text, for example. Okay, then let me also show you how we can use this because obviously as a developer, that would be important if you want to build something. So let's just say we want to react to these option value changes on product pages and then do something. Yeah, so in order to do that, I'll bring up the theme.liquid file just for simplicity because that gets called or gets rendered on every page. And then I'll go down to the closing body tag. And then I'll add a new script tag. So JavaScript script tag here. I'll wait for the window to load. Yeah, just to make sure everything is ready and the page is already loaded when I execute my, my script here. I'm actually not 100% sure if we would have to do this. I would need to double check. But yeah, now let's use this for simplicity. And then I use the subscribe function here. I want to subscribe to this event. This is the event name, option value selection change. And then as a second parameter, I provide the callback function that I want to run when this event occurs. In this case, just a simple console log, option has changed. Let's save this as is. And if we now visit the product page, every time we change an option, we should see our console log message, awesome. And we also see it every time that we change an option, perfect. So now we could build something more complex. Yeah, we don't have to just do a simple console log statement here. We could also update another element on the product page based on the selected variant, for example. Or if you subscribe to cart updates, then you might want to build a free shipping bar that shows, hey, 50 bucks left for free shipping or, some, or however, much, however much money is needed to unlock free shipping. So now you can build very dynamic elements and react to all these events that occur. Okay, so I feel this covers pretty well how the event system works in general, what this pub sub events variable is, and how we can use these events if you want to build your own features and react to them, which is probably the most important part. But now for everyone who's like very interested in the behind the scenes and stuff and who wants to become a good developer here, I think there should be all of you, right? <laughs> Uh, let me also explain how this event system is built. Let's say if you had to invent this, if you had to develop the subscribe and publish methods from scratch, how would you do that? And let's start with the subscribe method because this might get called several times throughout the theme yeah, in different places. For example, in the beginning, we had, we had an example where we subscribed to the click event once, had a simple console log statement, then we subscribed to it again, then we were interested in logging the data. Uh, in a different place, we might subscribe to option, option changes and so on and so forth. So this might appear several times. And really the easiest way to keep track of these subscribers is basically building a list or not necessarily list, more like a structured object where we always have the event name, let's say click events. 
and then an array or a list if you want of all the functions that we want to call in case of a click event. So in this case, we have like a simple console log statement and then one console log statement that logs the data. And then we do that for all the different event types or event names if you want. So down below we have option changes. And in this case, we just want to do a simple console log. Yeah, and then we would do this for all the places in the theme where someone subscribes. Yeah, we just build our structured object. And then on the flip side, if someone ever calls the publish method, let's say we want to publish a click event, and this is the data that we want to pass along, the button that was clicked, then we just have to check our structured object for click events. And here we see all the subscribers. And then we just execute these two functions here with the data. Yeah, so we would do console log, I was clicked, doesn't contain dynamic data. And then we do console log with the element, our button, which is the data that we pass right here. Yeah, so building this whole event system isn't even that complicated. First, you just collect all the subscribers in a structured object so that you can always look up the event name and then all the functions that we need to execute all the callback functions for this event right here. And if we ever want to publish an event, we just execute all the callback functions under this specific name here, click in this case. And this is also the exact same way that the Dawn theme implements this. You can check this out in the pubsub.js file. We first start with an empty list of subscribers, an empty structured object. And then if someone subscribes to an event, we basically just add this new callback function here under the event type or under the event name. And then down below, we have the publish function. Here we check, do we have subscribers for the event name? Do we have subscribers for the click event, for example? And if yes, then execute them all. Yeah, so this is how it works from a high level. Subscribe function builds the list, publish function executes them all. So again, subscribe function builds the list, the list of all the subscribers, and publish function executes them all. All right, and that's it for this one. This is how the PubSub event system works in Dawn, how we can use it, and a little bit of the background information, like how event systems work in general, if you ever have to build one from scratch. I hope you're less confused than before, and otherwise, let me know your open questions in the comments. Would be awesome to work together at one point, and have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you later.